Video blog there. Nice I'm old. Too. I don't know this stuff. He's hip. He knows. He's he not. Knows. Hi, Grim. What up? Vlog already knows Grim. He's not old or he's not hip. <laughs> You're not old. I'm not. It's all right. You're awesome. <laughs> Aw, thank you for being here, Adam. I love you so much. I love you. I love you more than knitting. That's a lot. <laughs> Give me the keys. I'll go check. In. Happy New Year! It is me, Kimberly McAlinden, and it is so wonderful to see you again. I have been working on setting up the tutorial for you for the sheep wreath, and let me just give you a quick visual. I'm working on it now. I just think it's incredible. I love it so much. So I'm going to show you the technique. Um, so there will be a tip time today. I also ha didn't show the last two days of my advent calendars because I got into Christmas Eve and Christmas and I just didn't. So I will be um, I'll be adding those in. I'm going to be I'm going to do a voiceover because I was so excited to work on the shawl. Um, 
that I just was like, you know what, I'm gonna open these up and I'll film it and then I'll talk about it later. So <laughs> you don't get to see me doing it live, but it was live at the time. And um, I also didn't finish opening my James Makes things. So James Makes yarn. <laughs> so I have a couple more to open from there. So I will be doing that. First up, we have Suburban Stitcher and I, you all know that I really, really loved this one. And I uh, was, it was Christmas night and I snuck up into my bedroom to film this very quickly so that I could wind these up and work on it Christmas night, which I actually ended up doing. I had such a wonderful time, very relaxing. Stayed in my pajamas all day on Christmas. So here is... Uh, number 25 and it was it's obviously I I know what it looks like because I've already knit it and later on you will see that I'm going to block it and I and I show you all how I blocked the shawl the shawl turned out absolutely spectacular so day 24 and 25 of suburban stitcher Next up, we have Chelsea Yarns, day 24. This was a really, really pretty color. It was like a purple, you know, like a lavender gray. And then it had, you know, the other colors mixed in with it. And it just looked really nice. Of course, it had that brown in there that, that every single color had that kind of tied it all together for me, which I thought was super cool. Um, here's day 25 and it is a really pretty, pretty color with the, well, I love, you know, that pretty blue and brown together looked like ice to me. And then I also had a, a full skein in there. Um, I don't know if it was something that I purchased extra, but it was this full skein of their uh, their fingering weight, 400 yards, and it was the color festive, and it was very, very pretty. Yay. And then we have uh, Vita Lifestyle, my girl Victoria. And this is the one case when I was like, darn, I should be in my studio with the lights because this red is a spectacular red. It is such a pretty red. And it, it doesn't show up. It, it really doesn't show up as pretty here. Um, but my dad was sleeping in the attic and the studio was taken down, which is why... <laughs> It took me so long to get this done. <laughs> I had to put my studio back together again after the holidays. Uh, and then day 25 was a full skein. And it is uh, the same. Um, oh, what's the word? Fingering weight yarn. But it is a full skein. Isn't that so pretty? That's such a great skein. I'll have to think of something really cool to do it with. It would be really cool if you put um, mohair with it and made, you know, a shawl or a hat or something because it is so pretty. So those were my, my, my three advents that went, you know, the whole, all the days. And uh, James Makes Things will be coming up soon. Next up, let's get caught up with uh, my advents. Uh, it is still the Christmas season because we have not hit Epiphany yet. So I am still totally in it. <laughs> but uh, I do have a couple more colors from James Makes Yarn from his box that I had this year. So I'm going to open those right now. Now these were the first three colors. First we had Twinkle, then we had Tinsel, and the last one was Dashing that we opened up. And 
so we have number four and number five to do. Just made it, it just made it last longer. <laughs> oh. oh, yes, this is called Snowflake. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, so pretty. What am I going to do with these? I kind of have an idea. Shh. <laughs> oh, so pretty. Okay, number five, the last one. <gasps> oh. Oh, I want a sweater of this. Make a wish. I wish I had a sweater's quantity of this. Oh, oh, wow. Look at this color. Look at it. Wow. Oh my gosh, James, you hit it out of the park. So, in order, I wonder if I can hold them all up. Let's see. Here's three, four, five. There it is. Hey, everybody. It's Kimberly. So, uh, you are up in my attic. I uh, This is my studio. So, this is behind the scenes. I'm getting ready to go on a live for the weight loss program that I'm involved with, but that's not nor here nor there. Uh, but what I want to do is I am going to block the Advent Shawl, What Tomorrow Brings, uh, the Suburban Stitcher Advent that I used. So uh, I've already soaked it. And this is the place in my house where not everybody walks around. So I'm going to use the carpet. I'm going to put the camera at a different angle and I'm going to show you uh, the, the pattern says to use blocking wires. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to use blocking wires because I actually, I'm just going to lay it out flat and, and let, let it do its thing. Uh, if I, 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 I mean, I'll have to see. Let's get to it. <laughs> I did end up using pins and not because I, I just wanted it to stay in the shape that it was. It's not exactly a, a triangle so I just did the best that I could and it'll be wonderful when I have it on. So I don't know can you see oh you can't see it in the shot you see like the crap in my basement. Hang on. <laughs> 
so here it is all laid out it's big and it's 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 lovely so this will dry overnight and then I can take pictures of it tomorrow so now that I step back from it I can see that this part is just a little yay During tip time, I'm going to be talking about locks. Now, locks you can go on Etsy and you can look up, you know, Wensleydale locks. That's the ones that I am using. Uh, mohair locks work, but you want to buy the locks in the lock structure like this. So this is a Wensleydale lock that I have. It's a little bit older, so it's a little yellow on the tips. So you can see it's a little yellowed on the tips, but I actually think it, it, it really makes, I, I love the way it looks. Um, so you can, you can go and find locks like this. You can also buy, this is what it looks like, um, as in the fleece, right? So this is what it looks like. Um, mine has been washed, very lightly washed. Um, and what you would do if you're buying a fleece and you want to do that, you're going to simply pull off the locks. Now, this has been, uh, here. so I just pulled one off. See? Uh, so that's what you're going to look for. I am going to source some. Uh, Tabitha of Long Island Yarn and Farm has Cotswold locks. Those are beautiful. Um, and I just have, I'm trying to figure out the exact amounts to tell her so that she can have them for sale. Um, this is my fleece. Let me get that out of the way. Um, I can tell you that, uh, the the one that I'm working on now and the one um, is 144 stitches will fit around a 12 inch form. So I every other stitch is using a lock. So for every round you use 72 locks. Now some of them are going to be thin like this. Some of them are going to be thick like this, and that's what makes it look great because it's all different. Some of them are like uber, uber thin. Let me find one. Some of them are super, super thin so that when they're all together like this, like it looks like what it looks like on the sheet, okay? you If you have a lock, like let's, I'm just gonna look at this one. See, this lock is gigantic. It's really big. You can split this lock. So there's one. So I just took one lock and made it into three. Okay, so you can absolutely do that. So I have been measuring how many locks I've been counting out 72 of them this is washed also so there is no lanolin or any extra vegetable fiber or vegetable matter on there um, and so each round which is 72 locks takes 20 grams or 5 eighths of an ounce right so a little bit over half of an ounce um, so I am up to round four. I will, uh, the first one, the first um, took seven rounds. So if you multiply, um, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna need a bunch, but all the information will be in the description box with how much you need. Um, and if, you know, if it's worth it for you to make, uh, you could also do this with yarn. Right, so if you had, instead of the locks, if you had different strips of yarn, ooh, I might have to do that, different colors of yarn, and then used that instead of a lock, you would have like a, a yarn, uh, a yarn, ooh, that would be so pretty. Maybe I'll use my leftover Suburban, ooh, that would be really nice. Hmm. 
uh, but there will be a little sheet that I will have um, and it will be it'll be free um, and uh, it'll have everything that you need to uh, to, to get this. Uh, it, if For those of you that want to write it down, um, I cast on 144 stitches on a size 7 needle. It is worsted weight yarn. It is wool yarn, but it doesn't really matter the yarn that you use. I would say to use a yarn that is kind of the same color as the locks that you get. Oh, there's some downstairs in my basement. I found these gray locks. I'm going to have to do that as well. Um, and I got the form at Michael's. All right. So here I have started a new one. Um, I was looking through uh, my stuff and I just want to show you here are the curls. Eee! So let me show you. Here's a lock and here's another lock. And you'll see that there's, a, there's some, some stuff on the tips. Um, and that is just because it's, this is an old fleece. I mean, this is probably from 2011, 2012. Look at this big fat lock. So I want to show you that there is a difference in the locks that you use. And that is okay. Sometimes I'll use like a super thin one like this, right? So they're super thick, super thin, and that's what gives you all of the variation uh, in in your knitting. So I am going to show you the technique. So here is a lock. All right, so I have just uh, knit a stitch. So it's going to be every other stitch. All right, I'm going to take my lock and I'm going, before I do anything with my yarn, I'm always keeping my yarn in the back. And before I do anything, I'm going to lay the lock in between my, my knitting needles. So in between here, and I'm keeping it so that it's the same amount in the front and the back, right? So I'm just cutting it in half here in my mind's eye. Now I'm going to pick up my yarn and I'm going to pick up the other half of the lock and I'm going to knit them together. Okay, now the last step is to take that lock that's hanging out in the back and bring the lock to the front. Leaving your working yarn in the back, I'm now going to work the next stitch as usual. I'm going to take another lock. Now sometimes in my brain I'm thinking to myself this one was a pretty fat lock so I'm going to use kind of a thinner lock this time. All right or a smaller lock. So again I'm going to lay the lock in between my needles. I'm going to go into the next stitch holding the back of the lock and my working yarn. I'm going to knit using those together and then I'm gonna take the lock and bring it forward and knit one. And so that's what you do all the way around. Now, when you get to your beginning of the round marker, you're gonna knit one round plain. So every other round is, is you know, you're playing with these locks. And just placing it there knit. It's not a fast process, but it's not a particularly slow process either. And knit one. Now, after I do a round of knit, I'm going to do the next round where the knit, the ones where I simply knit, that's the one that's going to get the lock on the next one. So it's alternating each row. Uh, these, this is 144 stitches. Let me show you the back. It's nice and flat. Uh, I've knit four rounds here. So this is going to fold over and then 
Can you see that? No, I'm just chatting away, not seeing. So this is going to fold over. And when I, when I finish, I'm going to do a couple more and then you seam this. But don't worry, I'll show you how to do it. Hopefully I'll, I'll get there. But that's the technique. Um, and I love it. The locks are nice and nice and locked in tight. I'm actually loving the color that this is turning out. And this is a, a simply a wool yarn that I actually received. Um, somebody's mom passed away or something and they, they sent, they sent me their yarn, but look at how great it matches, matches the locks. I can imagine that these locks are, you can, you could do them. I actually was looking through my stash. Brown locks would be awesome. Black locks would be amazing. And I'll probably make more. You don't have to have one this big. You can also make smaller ones. They would be adorable to, you know, to put on gifts or I'm going to hang this up in my house year round because it's absolutely gorgeous. Look how it just looks like it looks on the sheet. Um, all right, I'm going to do it again because it's so much fun. I started this late last night and here I am already. I'm on the fourth round of adding locks. So um, it's not difficult at all. It's actually super fun. And once you get into a rhythm, it's amazing. All right, so I just wanted to show you that I am adding this onto the frame. So one of the things that I wanted to show you is my frame has a side that kind of sticks out a little bit and then one that's a little concave. So the one that sticks out a little bit, let me see, see how you can see that this, this part sticks out a little bit and this is concave. So this is the part that I want the, the, the fabric to show on. I hope that made sense. Um, so so that's, that's the way that I set it up. So I put the rounded part facing down. And now I'm just going around and I am using the, here's the, this is the cast off edge right here. And then this is the cast on edge. And that's why I wanted you to start with the crochet cast on because it's so much easier to line line it up whereas if you were to do the long tail cast on it would be a little bit harder so uh, it, it'll be you could absolutely definitely do it but this way you actually can see each each stitch right and then you get this nice little braided edge so another thing that i wanted to say when you're finished so here we go I'll show you a couple. Right? Not very difficult at all. Wonderful. Okay. So when I'm finished, I'm going to see how I have the, this is the way, the way that this is being, is shown on here is because I did three rows three rounds of plain stockinette. Then I started the technique. Then at the end, I did about six or eight rows, actually six or seven. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I did six rounds and then, um, and then bound off just the regular way. And, um, so you can see that when I turn it over, oh my gosh, sorry. Uh, you can't tell anything, but what I like, look at how beautiful this looks, but when you turn it over this way, you certainly can shift it 
see how I'm shifting it, so that this little braid is on the bottom. And what that does is it still, you still have this coming through on the right side, um, but you have more up on the top here. And this one, because the curls were so big, and there is a little bit, we call this canarying, this little staining. I love the different colors of it, and the you can just see the luster of the of the beautiful locks. I just I think it is so spectacular. Um, I don't know if I'm going to put a bow on this one because I want it to hang up in my house all year round. So look at this little bitty one. Um, so when that's done, then we'll get some pretty pictures of it. But uh, it is just, it has been so much fun to do. And I really hope you try it. Here are some still photos that I snapped today with the finished product in different spots in my house. And you can see those beautiful curls all around the inside and the outside. I just love it. Thank you for joining me this week. It was so fun to get back behind the camera. I have to say, doing it every day, I, can't, I missed you guys a lot. So thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments or send me a message on Instagram. I'm Kimberly McAlinden over there. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, the subscribe button is right over there. Thank you so much for joining me this week and I'll see you next time. Bye.